The WPF team has chosen a photo viewer application as their new starter kit, showing off some of the greatest features in WPF. So today we have Nicholas Armstrong here with us, and uh, he's going to give us a tour. All right. Um, so we'll start off showing the, the uh, photo through screen. And, and what we've done here, we've, we've really tried to uh, provide a, an innovative uh, user experience uh, using photos and, and using the power of WPF. So here I can show, you know, there's different views, um, and we can flip through our photos. And, and for us, making the user experience on this product uh, really spectacular uh, was a big goal. And this, of course, is going to be, is, well, it's released right now as a uh, starter kit. Um, so that developers can take this and, and remix this and make this their own. It's a full application, but it's not like a product, right? The starter kit is a developer resource that they can use to learn WPF? Right, exactly. Okay. Um, you can use it to learn WPF. You can um, extend it and make it your own. In fact, we'll show you a little later about how you can do that, um, make it your own. Um, but let's look at some of the features that it has right now. Uh, so that we can see um, some of the power of WPF and some of the things that you'll get to work on because uh, we're releasing full source code for this. And I want to point out the, the zoom blur, right? Isn't that what that, what's going on there? Yeah, the on, the, on the film strip there, you can yeah. see it as it moves. There's a bit of a motion blur to show uh, that, uh, uh, showing the power of pixel shaders uh, used in WPF. And here we're using it just on, on uh, a plain list box that has been styled to look like a film strip. Very cool. And this is uh, from the WPF effects library, Yes, right? exactly. That, so that we've uh, been talking about before. Right, right. So you'll be able to get the code through photos through or with the effects library. Um, you know, if you already have an application, just grab that and you can throw that right in there. Okay. So we're looking at photos. Uh, you have this is like an album, right? Right. This is an album of photos. Um, we can go back to the top here, and this is this is our gallery of photos. So it's, it contains many albums. Um, Looking at here's some landscape pictures, here's some pictures of animals, urban mm -hmm. pictures, architecture pictures, and when I click on one of these, um, you know it'll pull up the uh, entire album description, and then clicking into them will pull open specific photos. Okay. But that's not the only way I can work with it. Um, it's also fully keyboard navig. Uh, you can use the keyboard, or if you've got a remote, uh, you can use the remote as well uh, to click on things, and you'll see that uh, once my remote gets going, right. I can actually you know, slide through these photos quite quickly That's cool. uh, and browse through them a lot better than I could on the web or, or using uh, some of the uh, traditional photo viewers because we've really, we've really optimized this to make it a great viewing experience. Right. Yeah, and like the load time itself is really quick. Yeah, absolutely. It so, just and there's other right views the available as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one, one additional view is the, uh, uh, we can overlay descriptions on it. Okay. Uh, here, this is talking about, you know, the description for that. Um, we can also click on more, and we can see this one doesn't actually have one, but we can provide rich text oh, um, cool. along yeah. with the photo. So um, we actually use this uh, internally for an auction application, okay. where we provide a details uh, picture of the auction app or mm -hmm. a picture of the auction item, and then full details about it, right. um, so that you could see that and really compare that and use it as a great way uh, of of browsing auction uh, items. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 we're uh, releasing a case study along. Uh, with the, the with photo series so that you can see exactly how we did that and what you need uh, and and what we changed based on the the photo serial core okay this album is like the the sample album there's a way to load your own albums right absolutely if you travel back uh, under this first box here we can click on create subscription okay and here we've got a wizard that allow you to import your own pictures um, from a folder on your hard drive so okay. here I'm gonna grab uh, my pictures folder and hit okay and then I can type um, some details about those pictures. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll just call them Nicholas's pictures. Sure. Uh, pick up a thumbnail for them. Um, and then I can pick a theme. I can actually change the theme that oh, Photosuru okay. is showing um, when somebody subscribes to my application. So this is showing off more of like WPF's features, right? The right, skin, absolutely. The skinning, the customization. Absolutely. Right. And then, uh, awesome. then the last step here is to provide it a couple details about where I'm going to be uploading it. Um, and then once I put all of those photos on uh, photos online, I can just send around a link to my subscription, and that'll pull up in our subscription center here, uh, which is shared with all of our newsreaders and uh, Photosuru and, and, and even your own applications. Okay. And it makes sure that you can manage all of these things online or off. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So just to you know reiterate on the themes thing here, um, using the Control T Command 
uh, I can actually flip between different themes, and, and the entire application is themable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's even something you can extend. Uh, during the PDC, we actually used themes to put in touch. Um, oh, wow. And, and in the future, with the release of .NET 4.0, you know, we're going to be extending this application to include things uh, like touch and by using themes. So just by changing the theme, you enabled touch functionality? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, we can, because with WPF, you can really compose your UI any way you want. And right. because of all of that stuff is described, uh, using resource dictionaries, in w which we're using to do, to yeah. do our themes, we can make all those changes. That's awesome. So like, it, was, it just shows like, you're not just styling, but the functionality. And I guess just before we move on a little bit more, is, is the theme just defined in XAML? Or how yep. do you the theme's entirely defined okay. in XAML. But uh, if you have to add additional code uh, behind that, maybe some different controls, we added a, a scatter view control. Mm -hmm. uh, that presented uh, photos as if you'd like scatter them out on your desktop. Right. Like the surface has been showing right. off so much. Like okay. the surface has been cool. showing off. Um, because it's a little easier to use with touch, um, yeah. you can incorporate those as well just by calling them from your XAML files. OK. And then I see a search box. Does yes. That, does that work? It does. <laughs> Here, I've Very typed cool. in city already. Okay. Um, and you can see that you know this is a photo album, just like we would normally get. But there's also a neat view hidden in, this, hidden in behind it, uh -huh. um, the explore view which pulls it up in this neat little explorer view. Okay. Um, so that, you know, I can click on things, explore things. So like tag-based navigation. Right, right, exactly. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. The search, is that looking at titles and tags? Or? Yep, it looks at okay. titles, descriptions, and tags. And, and, and once you find a, a, a picture you want, you can click it, and it'll sure. pull it open. And here is remember that we've used the uh, description or the rich text view for them. Like any other client application, we've got the power of Windows behind us, so we can mm -hmm. do things like um, we can print this photo just by clicking this button here, and we see the Windows print wizard come right. up. Um, you know, we can right click and set as the desktop background, or oh, save cool. it to the desktop, and do all of those things that you expect from a, a rich client application right. of running on Windows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, WPF as well uh, provides us some neat features like. Uh, uh, adaptive layout here. Yes. We can see that you know we changed based on the size of the window, and we can even do more radical changes. If I make it too small, yeah. we completely change the template awesome. uh, once, and then even twice um, as you change the size, so that you can really take advantage of the available screen space as, a, as opposed to limiting yourself to that mm -hmm. that center column that you have available on the web. That's very cool. I love the adaptive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Just using the space you have wisely, right? Right. So. Right. And of course, we ship along with this. Now, um, this run is our beta 2 release. OK. But, um, uh, and, and that's, that's coming online right now. Beta 2 of Subscription Center. Beta 2 right. of Subscription okay. Center. And you'll see us release the, the full version uh, within the next um, you know, couple months. Sure. But, um, OK. And, and what this does is it allows us to manage multiple subscriptions. So you know, this is not just a rich application that's looking at an internet data source, though it is. But we're also able to download that and cache that and provide all that that experience, even when you're completely offline. Okay. So yeah, so I was gonna ask, so you get offline. Right. Uh, right. You get function. offline. Okay. Um, it provides a couple details, so we can provide we can see that um, you know maybe these are the newest items in the feed. Mm -hmm. um, so we can show that we can do. Uh, we've got our newsreader kits out there right now. Okay. Um, and those sh they show news items uh, in a rich reader view that again has adaptive layout and rich text and all that other stuff works offline and you can grab it all through subscription center. Okay. And if you find something you like, double click and it'll pull up the uh, actual application right to that item. Oh, neat. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, PhotoSuper looks pretty cool. Yes, it does. And so this is going to be available on Windows Client.net. Yep, you're going to see that we're actually we've got a, a little bit of a split thing going on here. We've got the source code for this called SE Photo Viewer, okay. um, just like our SE Newsreader Kit. Right. We'll be living on Windows Client.net with a full source code, and you can download everything. You can play around with it, and I'm going to show you that in a couple minutes okay. how to work with that code. Yeah. Um, and also, we're going to be running Photosuru.com, mm -hmm. which has Photosuru the branded experience. Okay. Um, so that if you just want to, you know, try it out, you don't have to install Visual yeah. Studio. Um, if somebody sends you a subscription link. You can mm -hmm. install it right in Subscription Center, and it'll do that full install. And you can double click on the link, and it'll cool. magically uh, install that subscription for you and sync it so you can use it. OK. And that's at photosuru.com. And that's at photosuru.com. OK. Great. OK. Well, looks awesome. Thanks for stopping by, Nicholas. Great. Thanks. All right.